Thank you and welcome to the show today. The topic this morning is the African American Church and Historical Black Colleges. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the African American Church and the role that this church has played in the development of historical black colleges, uh, Dr. James Baxter. And of course, uh, Dr. Baxter will give us some additional information in reference to his background, uh, his education, and some of the things that in the end were important in bringing him to uh, this particular uh, show for today. And of course, let us have you to do that, uh, Mr. Baxter, uh, Dr. Baxter, by talking about your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of eventually leading you to uh, this particular spot today. Let me say good morning, Dr. Haney. Mm -hmm. And I kind of enjoy being with you today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm James Baxter, and I am a native Nashvilleian. I grew up in a family of seven. Uh, I'm Miss Venus, baby boy. Uh, my mother was very religious. Uh, I came out of a out of a Christian home. Mm -hmm. I'm a graduate of Lane College in Jackson, Tennessee, and I hold a master's and a doctoral degree from Tennessee State mm -hmm. University. And yes, I'm so glad I went to TSU. Mm -hmm. I am a, a public educator. Mm -hmm. I teach at Hillsborough High School, mm -hmm. world history and world geography. Mm -hmm. I also teach in the evening school at Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. where I teach American history. I'm also a member of the clergy. Mm -hmm. I am a preacher not pastoring. Mm -hmm. The Lord has blessed me and saw fit to place mm -hmm. me on sabbatical leave. Mm -hmm. But I would say that out of all of uh, the children that my mom and dad had, mm -hmm. I'm the only child to graduate from high school mm -hmm. and then to go on and receive mm -hmm. uh, higher education. Mm -hmm. So the Lord has certainly been good mm -hmm. uh, and I thank him for all that he's done in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we talk about uh, the African American church and historical black colleges, uh, Dr. Baxter, I think that sort of calls to uh, mind uh, the uh, situation of uh, the uh, African American race following emancipation and following yes. slavery in 1865. Why yes. don't you give uh, or, our audience some idea in terms of the challenges that must have met uh, these Africans uh, coming out of slavery in 1865 and a desire to have education? Well, Dr. Haney, if we look at America during the antebellum period, uh, more specifically the slave era, mm -hmm. We know that every southern state mm -hmm. uh, participating in uh, that particular institution mm -hmm. or the peculiar institution of slavery, mm -hmm. it was prohibited for a slave mm -hmm. to learn how to read mm -hmm. and write. Mm -hmm. uh, knowledge then and still is today is power. power. Mm -hmm. So the major goal of every slave master was to keep the slave enslaved, mm -hmm. uh, to keep him ignorant, mm -hmm. and then to indoctrinate his mind that uh, he was to obey his master, uh, that uh, an evil curse had been placed upon him. Mm -hmm. So it was against the order of the day for a slave to be able to read or write mm -hmm. because you became a dangerous individual mm -hmm. on the plantation. Mm -hmm. However, we do know that on some plantations, house slaves were taught to read mm -hmm. and could write by way of the master's wife mm -hmm. uh, or a hired hand on plantation mm -hmm. Um, and then certainly after Emancipation Proclamation or going into the post and to, and going into the post uh, slave era, mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, churches, uh, black churches, saw the need mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to, to establish uh, institutions mm -hmm. for the sole purpose mm -hmm. of educating mm -hmm. uh, sons and daughters of former slaves. So they set up institutions mm -hmm. throughout the South. Uh, and up, and uh, up along the northeast mm -hmm. uh, Atlantic seaboard, schools like um, Lane College, mm -hmm. um, uh, schools uh, established by the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. which Lane is affiliated with, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, African um, Methodist Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. uh, the AME Zion Church. Mm -hmm. These uh, uh, church affiliate organizations saw the need to set up mm -hmm. uh, institutions of higher learning mm -hmm. for the sole purpose of lifting the veil mm -hmm. of, of the former slaves mm -hmm. and for the education of generations to come. Mm -hmm. So churches have played a, uh, a major role mm -hmm. in educating mm -hmm. African American people from slavery mm -hmm. to freedom. Uh, if we look at Nashville, Tennessee within itself, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. course, Fisk University 
was founded by way of the American Missionary Association. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and certainly it was named after General Fisk. Mm -hmm. But when we look at Fisk University, Fisk University has done an outstanding job mm -hmm. in educating African Americans. Mm -hmm. Now, the year was 1866. Mm -hmm. Fisk University was founded for the sole purpose of educating mm -hmm. slave children mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so there's a real history when we talk, when we uh, bring up the topic at the African American church and historical black colleges, these churches played a, 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 real, a real role, a crucial role in real these churches. These churches played a profound role because when we look at their approach to educating the former slaves. Let, let us interrupt right here, yes. uh, Dr. Baxter, because yes. we, uh, we have to take our first commercial break, after which we'll come back and continue our conversation. Okay. 